AR versus versus DA. Now, as you know, if you're in the business, that stands for appointed representatives versus directly authorization. And it does really depend on how you like to roll in the business. I want to talk to you about the pros and cons of each, really, and whether you'll want to go from um, an AR to directly authorized, because that may well be your objective at some point in the future. Now, if you're new to the mortgage business, uh, you've come away from maybe the safety of employment because, of course, you've always got the uh, the employed uh, position, haven't you? So there, there's a picture there of your bank or building society um, or broker, call them what you like, somebody who's big enough to employ people. So if you're employed, you know, there's, there's you down there uh, with one or two of these people, then you don't have to worry about any of this because you're 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 a uh, you're a representative of them, aren't you? You're employed by them and you sell their products. Um, if you're a broker, you're able to give full market, whole of market advice as well. But you're employed and that's 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 fine. And that's the, the choice that you've made. Now, if you decided against employment or you haven't had many opportunities of employment because there's not that many opportunities out there, the banks, build size, are all pulling out of giving advice and the big broker world is not quite there yet. It's starting to happen. You're starting to get private equity money coming into the industry now, bulking out brokerages so that they can start an employee kind of mentality growth situation, which you know is a really good thing to do. But in the meantime, many people opt for um, self-employment or AR status, appointed representative status. And what happens here is you've got to find a principal. So you've got to find somebody or something that's going to act as your principal. Now, the principal can be typically a network. Um, it can also be a broker or, or advisor firm, call it what you like. Now, we're talking about mortgage advice, not, not financial advice, very different. And the idea is that you link in with one of those, those principles. You might go to a network like Primus, Open Work, uh, Newly, something like that, or you might join a brokerage that's taking on ARs, and you effectively become an appointed representative of the network or an appointed representative of the broker. You're self-employed, mostly, so you, know, you, you do your own thing, but you're an AR. Now, what does this mean, therefore? It means pretty much that the principle that you log in with has massive responsibility for everything that you do. I mean, I've got a list of seven or eight things up there just to sort of take you through the stuff that the principal has to do. They're, they're, they're responsible for the advice that you give, first of all. So let's put you in here, shall we? There you go. There we are. Hello. There you go. My little stick man there. And there's there's the AI over here. They're broadly they're the same, really, at the end of the day. The broker obviously is a firm that's giving advice, and the network is a firm that's got the representation. But these are all F FCA authorized direct aren't they these principles that's the point and we talk about that in other videos but the the principle is directly responsible for the advice that you give therefore they carry the can and they take out the insurances and charge you accordingly now um, they're also responsible for the financial stability of the ar now the ar you or, but you could also be a firm that's got lots of ARs in it. You know, you could be a, a brokerage, for example, with two or three ARs, all of the same network, but you are a firm. So they're responsible for your financial stability and security. They're responsible for your growth and development as well. They provide supervisors, they provide coaches, they provide trainers. Now, good ones like New Leaf, Primus, they've all got training departments who are responsible for training you. They've got supervisors, mentors who are there to help you as much as possible. They're responsible for that. They charge you for it, don't get me wrong, but they're actually responsible for it as well. They're also responsible for systems, processes, sourcing engines, stuff like that. So, you know, you've got to use their computer system. You've got to use their sourcing engine. You've got to use their systems. You've got to follow their processes. You've got to sort, follow their principles, their marketing processes. You can't really do an awful lot on your own. You've got to follow what they tell you to do because ultimately they're responsible, of course, for the advice that you give. And that's what you've signed up for as well. They're also responsible for lender and product provider liaison. 
So you, you might think you're going to be able to use every single lender going, but as an AR, you are completely reliant upon the broker having, having liaisons with lenders, liaisons with insurance companies. Uh, they have connections with the insurance companies. The network has connections as well. So only, only their insurance companies, only their lenders can you use. If you're, if you're part of a club, the Mort League and General Mortgage Club, only can you join that if, you're part, if it's part of the network. So they're responsible for giving you lenders as well, which is key, isn't it? They're, they're responsible for support, advice, experience, general day-to-day -day running as well. Um, they're also responsible for paying you the dosh. <laughs> they pay you prop fees and commissions. All the money you earn pretty much finds its way through that conduit. You know, lender, proc fee, network to you. Insurance company, commissions, network to you. So, you know, you're going to get money from them. Unless, obviously, they're cut as well. They're responsible for TNC, training and competence, getting you on board, getting you to competent status, getting you competent advisory status, keeping you uh, fit and proper, if you like, along the way. They're responsible for that. And more importantly, they're responsible for control and oversight of you. So think about it. The principal has got an awful lot of responsibilities. So it's cost them time. It costs them money. It's effort, toil, just to keep themselves uh, regulated, if you like, authorised and, and, and doing the job properly under the Financial Conduct Authority. And that's where a couple of problems are beginning to rear their head. The FCA have said uh, last week that they're a little bit concerned, I don't know what their words were, they're worried about what's going on here. The FCA have put the uh, the magnifying glass, so let's just draw a little magnifying glass, shall we? Let's put a little magnifying glass here, just so the straight where it's going, over the brokerage and the, the, the principles, really. That's what they're, they're thinking about. They're worried, you see, that these brokers and these networks, some are doing a really good job, some aren't. Some are lacking in their control and oversight of the ARs that they have under their wings. They've kind of taken them on, given them a bit of software, given them compliance, et cetera, et cetera, and just left you to your own devices, which is great if you're okay with that. But of course, because they're responsible for everything you do, they're not giving you supervision and oversight. They're not keeping an eye on things. And the FCA justifiably quite worried about that. And they're going to bring in some legislation this year or next year to beef up this area. So if you're a principal, a broker or network, and you're not giving proper oversight, supervision, uh, coaching, support to these people, um, super, oversight really means checking, observing. So a supervisor needs to be there. And she observes you regularly, keeps an eye on you, watches your, your, your work, your KPIs, watches your suitability letters and your fact finding, all those good things. That's what that's what you call about oversight, just keeping an eye. You've got to beef it up. You're going to have to beef it up. And, um, you know, if you want some help, we can help you with the coaching because we do a ton of that. And supervision, we do a supervision in a box. So if you want some supervisors quickly, we can do that for you online using video because it's dead easy on video to do that. So that's the uh, the first issue, really, and that's and that's how an AR works. So if you've just joined the trade and you've just got yourself qualified, becoming an AR of a broker or network is probably the right thing for you. It's probably right. And I've got lots of coaching uh, people that we coach that have done directly that. I've got one, one chat that's joined network recently, a couple of network members, great stuff. Some people have joined brokers, and the brokers have taken them on as ARs. Uh, the broker is already up and functioning. They've taken on ARs as self to expand. So it's a great way of getting in, getting your competent advisor status, get, getting yourself comfortable with the business. But then lies the next part of this discussion, really, because you might be in a situation where you don't want to have this um, control, this oversight, these restrictions, these, this straitjacket, call it what you like. And you might want to segue over away from becoming an AR, and you might want to become directly authorised. Now, directly authorised, as you can appreciate, is where you bypass all of um, this AR business and principles, and you go straight, here we go, let's draw my little picture up there, to the FCA. So, simple as that. You're directly authorised by the Financial Conduct Authority as you can see from the picture there. So you don't have any of this business. 
you basically control your own destiny. And that's the beauty of it, really. Think about it. It makes sense, doesn't it? Now, why would you want to do that? Well, there's several reasons why you want to do that. First of all, you're not new anymore. Your, your, your business is established. You've got leads. You've got client bank. It's working really well for you. And therefore, you want to be more autonomous. You want to make your own decisions. You want to control your destiny. Because you can't when you are an AR or a broker, AR or a network, because they control you. This is the way it works. I'm not knocking it. This is the way it works. Um, you might, for example, want to have control over your sales process, how you handle your clients. You might want to change the way the sales process you operate. You might want to change the software that you use. You might want to go to the market, get some new software, some new best advice software, some new sourcing software, because you don't think the one they tell you to use is very good or you don't like it. Um, you might want to recruit some people. You might want to take on some ARs of your own. Now, obviously, if you're directly authorized with the FCA, you can then take on your own ARs. Of course you can, because you're directly authorized. You can do it here and here, but it's pickly. But you've got to do as the network tells you or the broker tells you, because, again, they're responsible for all of the ARs below them. So if you want to recruit, start you know, getting some new advisors into your business, then directly authorized might be the, uh, might be the way. You want to grow. You might want to innovate. Uh, you might want to inject some capital into your business and maybe look at acquisitions or be acquired you know, by a private equity firm or something like that. Um, you might want to grow and put money into your business uh, and therefore be gobbled up by uh, an acquisition firm. That may well be what you want to do. Before you do that, of course, you've got to be, make sure you're directly authorised. Now, becoming directly authorized is not easy. Of course, it's not. You, know, you can Google it, and there's people that will give you advice on how to do that. There's service companies that look after you, like Paradigm Consulting, for example, jolly good firm. Now, what they do, they're not networks as such. They actually give you, though, the services that many of the networks would have given the AR, and maybe a brokerage might have given you compliance support, etc. The network, for example, will have very good compliance services. I mean, they've got their risk lens on well and truly, haven't they? So you might be able to buy that externally. So although you are directly authorized, you're using a service company to help you with your authorization. I've got uh, one of the guys that I coach, he's directly authorized his firm. He's got three or four people working for him. He actually employs on a, on a freelance basis, some compliance support. He, he brings this in, and like I saw, yeah, the self-employed person comes in, they're freelance consulting, and they give him all the compliance support he needs because he doesn't want to do it, which is his key. Um, there's different costs in different ways. So that's the, the, the options, really. At some point in your business, you may decide to, to get away from this and go, go that way. You have to be careful. Check the small print that you sign up for in the first place. Um, will they stop paying you commission as soon as you say you want to go DA, for example? Will they provide some support to you to do that? Will they encourage that? It's not a bad thing to do as well. Um, will they want to keep your clients? So who, who owns the clients? This is particularly relevant over here. The broker may well own your clients. You think they're yours, but they're actually owned by the broker. The network might feel the same way as well. Obviously, directly authorised, the clients are yours. And that's the route to take long term. So there's a few ideas for you.